now we're going to get down to the nitty gritty of what Indians are all about. I still say we Indian people are believers in the truth. This is the way of life that was given to your people. You born an Indian, you're going to die an Indian. Indianness is a good life. You're facing an Indian this afternoon. Saturday afternoon out there everyone welcome to your number one source for Native American television news it's Native News Today I'm Jason Salzman along with Kyla McCown on this Bedlam Saturday <laughs> Bedlam here on Native News Today myself OU grad Kyla here OSU yeah, grad go folks, go folks <laughs> of course it's hard for me to even stand mm -hmm. here when that being said but uh, the game's going on right now so I know all of you have switched off of the game over to <laughs> Native News Today we want to th say thank you for that, and you're not going to be disappointed. We've got a great show lined up for you today. Um, Kyla, you actually, this is a really special show for you. you. This story that we're going to have with you and your genealogy is probably really important to yeah, you. Yeah, it was great. Uh, we were trying to work on a little special where I would go, and mm -hmm. I, would I would check with the archives, you mm -hmm. know, at, here at Creek Nation and some Ancestry.com and see what all I could find. Very cool. We're, we're, I know everybody out there is going to be um, looking forward to that. A lot of people go on Ancestry.com and it's neat to look <laughs> back and, and really to um, take advantage of the resources we have, have here at Creek Nation with our cultural preservation and, and that kind of stuff. So I'm um, very excited about that. And I look back at Muskogee Day at Iron Gate Soup Kitchen. Yeah. You know, a lot of people there hungry in Tulsa, Muskogee Creek Nation giving back on this day. And uh, if you didn't get a chance to go up to Muskogee Day, don't worry. We got it for you here on Native News Today. So we'll have that as well, and, and as well as some other holiday theme stories for yeah, you too. Toy drive. Exactly, toy drive. And we're very excited about it all. Don't go anywhere. We're going to take our first break, and we'll be right back with Native News Today. <laughs> For more information about Muskogee language preservation, please call us at 918-732-73. The Muskogee language has always been a part of my life, and so I grew up um, speaking the language and I've used it throughout my life. I found that people were interested in learning the language and wanting to revitalize it. The language immersion method of teaching is one that I'm comfortable with. It's a way of reconnecting with our histories and our cultures and to give this gift or pass this gift on to our children. Mado, hadam chihijahis. Jehojef get Paul fixakodos. I'm able to preach in English and Muskogee, our language too, so you know, there's not many that does that today. When I was growing up, it's all we had, Muskogee language, and you know, that's all they preach. I could talk my language when I was small, when I grew up, I could understand what they were saying. We don't want to lose that you know, language, especially our songs, our native songs and the Muskogee hymns. You know, we want to keep them. And welcome back to Native News today on what I'm sure is a blustery, cold, winter-filled <laughs> Saturday. I hope everybody out there is being safe on the roads if you're traveling and if you have loved ones traveling. hope everybody's safe. But our first story of the day takes us to Iron Gate in downtown Tulsa mm -hmm. for Muskogee Day at the soup kitchen there. And you guys were there as, long, as well as with us, the paper crew, um, on just a really nice day, a lot of officials out serving. Yeah, and I think it was really important because I had no idea that Iron Gate actually serves about 800 people mm -hmm. each day for mm -hmm. lunch. And that's just a lot of people that are being touched. And most of them are, uh, a lot of them are Native American, um, you know, mostly Cherokee and Creek, as mm -hmm. they say in this story. But that's why they wanted to reach out. And really this story goes into a little bit of what they've done with their Native American um, outreach and Native American advisory board there. And so we were just thrilled to be there uh, on Muskogee Day, along with a lot of people from Creek Nation, really making it happen. And those folks were very glad to have it. 
Well, we're at Iron Gate, which is the downtown soup kitchen and food pantry in Tulsa. And today is a Native American day. Today is Muscogee Creek Nation Day. And it is sponsored entirely by the Creek Nation. Chara Giles arranged all of this. We have authentic Creek food. We have um, fry bread. We have fried meat. We have hominy, beans, grape dumplings. Mm -hmm. And we have a full house. we feed between 600 and 700 people every day of the year, some days more than that. And we give 300 grocery bags every week. So every year we will feed say 300,000 people. And we have discovered that a third of the people who come here for food assistance are Native Americans. Many tribes, but predominantly Creek and Cherokee. So we have a Native American committee on our board of directors that thought, how can we better acknowledge and celebrate not only our Native American guests, but our Indian volunteers and our Indian culture, because we are located in Tulsa in Creek Nation. This is my first time at Iron, Iron Gate. Uh, my first time being here. It's really exciting. Uh, it's nice that Muskogee people are able to give back to not only the communities that are here, but also the citizens that we have um, that are out here in our communities. Oh yeah, a lot of people have been like, oh my gosh, are you a queen? I'm like, no, I'm just, I'm a princess, but uh, a lot of people ask about it, and it's nice to see that, you know, I think it's just nice for them to be able to see somebody that they don't get to see every day. A lot of them come through here a lot, and so it's nice to see a smiling face, I think, and so I think a lot of our elected officials, they're doing that job as well today, so. Well, you know, uh, traditionally, culturally, that's who we are as Muscogee Creek people, is that we've always said that uh, as Indian people, if someone is needing help, we do that, and we extend it uh, uh, with uh, our hearts as well. And so today's a special day, Second Chief and I and some members of the council and newly elected officials are here to be able to do this, and, and it's, it's a good feeling, especially during the time of Thanksgiving. Well, sometimes, Jason, the smaller things are the bigger things in, in, in what we do. Uh, I think that uh, whenever we're able to, to do this, especially for those that, uh, you know, are just uh, uh, down a little bit in their lives and, and to be able to provide this type of meal or traditional meal is, uh, you know, we have people coming through and, and, and uh, they're, they're just really pleased and that uh, they're getting, re uh, getting ready to eat some Indian food. So it, it's really good. And, you know, uh, sometimes we forget that uh, whatever we do on a bigger scale, uh, it's more important uh, to do the smaller things as well. As, as, and that's what we're doing today. Well, it is Muscoy Creek Nation Day here at Iron Gate. Iron Gate is a food pantry and soup kitchen located here in downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma. And um, every year they host, during for Native American Month, they host a Native American Day. And it has grown tremendously in the, um, the people that come out to eat. There has been an influx, There's, this should continue to grow as well. So we had offered to the tribes, the local tribes here in the area, to, would you consider hosting a full day? And that way there'd be more than just one day of eating some home cooking, traditional food from back home. Iron Gate, um, because there is such a large Native American population, they um, have entertained the idea of having a Native American advisory board. So we got representatives from Osage Nation, Cherokee Nation, Muscogee Creek Nation. Um, so I was honored when they asked me if I would consider sitting on that board just to you know, see what else we can do as far as reaching out to our Native American population here in the Tulsa area and getting some of these citizens connected back to their tribes. And if we can get them off the streets and give them a hearty meal, just anything we can do to help make their life a little bit better. 
our thanks again to the great people at Iron Gate. Wonderful to be part of that and really give back around the holidays. And mm -hmm. that's kind of what our next story gets into as well. The Muskogee Creek Nation Reintegration Program. You know, Kyla, they deal with not only Muskogee citizens and folks coming out of prison, but also oh, outreach mm -hmm. in prison too. And around the holidays, you know, they have a toy drive because those incarcerated folks, really it's tough for them to get gifts and stuff for their loved ones. And, and that's definitely important. You know, there's the different charities, Angel Tree and everything, but I think it's important to have this toy drive specifically for mm -hmm. those that have incarcerated parents. Yeah, and reintegration, you know, we, we go on and on, but it's, it's the truth. They do so many things and outreach other than just the core responsibilities mm -hmm. of the program and the department. So they do things like this all throughout the year, but this is really special and they've been doing it for about five years now, I think. Um, and getting a lot of toys and make sure you pay attention to all those places out there where there'll be a drop box because they can really uh, get all that they can and uh, it'll be great to give at mm -hmm. this holiday season. So great things. Well, we're real excited. It's our fifth annual toy drive. We do it, you know, we've done it for five years and we are, we have boxes out everywhere all over the complex. We have boxes throughout Oatmulgee and Henrietta and we are just looking for support to be able to give the children what we need to, you know, make sure they have a great Christmas. We just think that these children, they didn't have a choice in the matter and they're there and they want to receive a gift just like we've all had before and, you know, growing up. And so this is our way to kind of let them feel something special and magical at Christmas time. It was a vision of, uh, you know, the program manager, Tony Fish, and he was, it was just something that we felt that we had a need. I mean, throughout the year, there's things that, you know, families, children, you know, they, they need our support. And this is just one way I think that he saw that we could give back. Um, I think last year we served about 75 children. So we need anything from toys for the little ones and probably about 10 and 12 and up, we need gift cards. There's about 15 drop-off boxes throughout um, Mount Mulgee. Henrietta, the complex, um, and you know that's a place that you can go. Anyone can go and donate a toy, and or if you're not comfortable, you know, leaving a gift card, you can always call the office here, and we'll be able to make sure that that gets to the older children. People have come to know that this is what we're going to do, and I think the more people that we can get on board, as far as you know, vendors and you know, just individual support, the better it'll be, and the bigger it'll grow, Great. which is which is the dream. Okay, it's the moment we've all been waiting on, the big <laughs> reveal of Kyla's <laughs> genealogy. No, but seriously, Kyla, what, what kind of led you and Amanda to go and, and sort of do this story? Well, um, ever since I first came here, you know, I've like had my CDIB card mm. and everything, but I wanted to see if there was more about it and just get more of the cultural mm. ancestry and see where my family came from. I know, and yeah. you find out where they're from and you know, you know, the towns, tribal towns. Um, clans and you know that all goes down matrilineally so you can trace the heritage mm -hmm. it's, it's really fun when you start getting into it I think that's what you guys realize and I, I've seen you go through it you know a couple <laughs> days here before you guys all huddled up looking mm -hmm. at your ancestry and it's really neat um, and it's fun for a lot of people to do for, uh, to do and you find out more about yourself and like you said there's that connection that greater connection that you have to your roots and um, that's you know the greatest thing as somebody that can have is knowing exactly where they came from, mm -hmm. what they're all about. So you guys had a lot of fun with this story, <laughs> I'm sure, are. and uh, we're glad to show it to the folks today. I'm Kyla McCowan from Kellyville, Oklahoma. Uh, I grew up knowing that I was Muskogee Creek. Um, I have my card, of course, but I didn't know a whole lot about it. I went through school and, you know, kind of got some help and everything, but once I actually started working here, it made me a lot more interested in really looking into my history. Uh, my favorite discovery was actually that on my dad's side, I'm Cherokee. I think one of the most interesting parts was that I was able to trace my ancestors back to pre-removal um, from Oklahoma and Arkansas before then, uh, all the way you know, to Alabama and Georgia. I found a lot of family there. After visiting the archives and library over at Muskogee Creek Nation on the complex, um, I realized that my tribal town had actually had roots to Seminole, and so it turns out that I'm also Seminole. It's actually the Chiaha Seminole Band, and they were part of the Creek Confederacy of Georgia. I actually came across criminal records um, for a family member that a relative that was put into jail for moonshine. He was a moonshiner, so he was in prison for a year. So the moonshiner, Bill Hunt, actually his daughter married Thomas Johnson, which is where my creek comes from because he's the one that actually signed 
up under the Dawes roll, the final Dawes roll. So it was really exciting because um, working with the tribe, I had heard of some Perrymans and actually covered them um, at an event and heard all about how they were the one of the kind of first families of Tulsa and really started Tulsa and they were actually Creek. Um, so when I found some of the Perrymans, like Emma Perryman in my ancestry tree, um, I am wondering and still investigating whether or not it's the same Perrymans. And so since I've found the Cherokee and Seminole sites, I would like to somehow investigate and get the paperwork in order to be more Indian on my CDIB card. <laughs> because it's my heritage and I want it to be known and I would like to just know, you know, what, how much of it I am. It's all really interesting. Yeah, and I think another thing it's really cool that I'm able to tell my grandparents about this right now, you know, about stuff they didn't even know about. And they had no idea that we were actually, you know, more Indian than what our CDIB cards and our citizenship showed. So it would be cool, you know, I'm able to tell my parents, but it would be really neat to share that with my kids and then be able to enroll and get, you know, and have, have their cultural experience too. Okay, and winding down to a couple of our last stories for today. You know, all of us out there at the age of 16, 15, 16 right there, <laughs> we kind of realize we're going to have to get a job, you know. You want to get that car, you're going to have to get a job, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. So it was those things growing up as a teenager, you know, it's kind of tough finding a job. Well, it isn't for Muskogee Creek youth if they just reach out the summer youth program. Mm -hmm. Since 1977, it's been a, a big deal. I mean, we were both in right? it. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's, it's helped me a few summers mm -hmm. uh, get a job. and For sure. And it's mm -hmm. on-the-job training, mm -hmm. um, you know, year-round. And, and it's really neat how to see it grow. You know, like I said, it started in 77. And it was just summer jobs for 16, you know, around that mm -hmm. age. Now, you know, there's so many things. It's for college students. They can help you pay for your ACT. You mm -hmm. know, just all sorts of things that go into it now that didn't back then. So we went over and spoke with the good folks from the Summer Youth Program and also some folks that were there when it first started uh, a lot about this great program. Since 1977, the Muskogee Creek Nation Employment and Training Summer Youth Program has been putting Muskogee teens and young adults to work and it continues to grow each year. The Summer Youth Program has incre increased every year, um, about 100 for the last two years since I've been in the program. Um, we had over 600 youth participate last summer and we anticipate about the same or more this summer again. Program Coordinator Nancy Mason talked about how their methods have continued to evolve to better prepare youth for the employment process. That's one of the things that we've wanted them to focus on also is exploring careers because that's probably going to change for them, but if they get a taste of what it's like to do one job and they realize, hey, that's not something I want to do for my future, then they get that experience out of the way. Um, as well as with our college and technical school students, what we require them to do now is actually find a job that's related to their major so they actually get that experience that's going to help them in the future get that real job. Um, so that's been a change that we implemented last year and we're going to continue to do that again this year. We've made it more um, intensive in actually helping youth to learn skills that they weren't before. Um, now they have to actually go out and find their own jobs where in the past they were just placed at locations. Um, this gives them opportunity to do interviews with the work sites so they get a little feedback about how they're doing. Um, we've also done a performance evaluation at the end of the summer, and so they get another feedback from their employer as to how they've done, would they be a reference for them in the future, um, and it's actually led to permanent employment for many of our participants. One of those participants is Carrie Harjo, who now works for the program that helped her land her first job. I was uh, in the summer youth program, and I worked since I was 16 up until I was 21. Um, I worked in many different areas of the tribe and it has helped me a lot now that I have a full-time job. When I first started here on the work program after I graduated from the College of Muskogee, I didn't know how to do an interview or anything and Nancy actually helped me with that and I actually had to interview for another job before this position and I actually did pretty good so it helped me a lot. So I'm grateful that we do that for the kids now. Perry Anderson was there in the beginning. At the helm of the program when it started in 1977, he talked about how it started at Muskogee Creek Nation. Well, I go in and, and Chief Cox was the chief then, and him and Chubby and, and Buddy York sat down with me and said, uh, why, don't, why don't we 
we got a program we might put in, a summer program. I said, yeah, I read about it. And I said, but nobody wants to put in for it. And they said, no. I said, let's put in for it then. So we put in for it that day. The next week we had enough for 25 kids. And Bob Pipe, who was head of the Indian Education in Washington, called me and said, uh, I've got a, a grant for you for 25 kids. So I said, fine, we'll take it. So I put 25 kids to work. Before the summer was over, I think it was the sixth week, he called me and he said, uh, I'm going to award you 50. He said, can you find 25 slots? I, I found 25 additional slots. Next year, it was 125. And then, of course, it went then to uh, the most we had was 552. It's the National World, uh, the United States JTPA champions in 1980. We won it all. Went to Washington, D.C. and showed it off for a week. So it's been great ever since, and they're really doing a good job now. The program has also gotten tremendous support from partnering tribal departments and job sites. We collaborated a lot with different agencies throughout the tribe, and that was really helpful this last year. Um, of course, behavioral health helped us with those who had substance abuse issues. They also provided some of the conflict resolution um, training that we did. Um, so we hope to partner with them again, um, as well as the college was a great place. We took a tour for all of our students that were older um, so that they just learned about the college and the opportunities they could have if they attended that school um, as, in the future as one of their options. So just partnering with the different agencies was a big thing. And like I said, I hope to increase that where um, maybe they take a tour of uh, the food warehouse, um, that type of thing, food distribution, so that they get another exposure to resources available in the tribe, um, but then also what's out there as far as jobs, another job opportunity for them. For Mason and her staff, the task of putting young Muscogee people to work is a rewarding endeavor. We've had a lot of young people getting jobs recently, permanent jobs, so that's just exciting for me that, hey, they're working, um, maybe some of the youth who have dealt with some challenges, because we do specifically target those youth throughout the year, too. Um, if they've overcome something and they're maybe doing a lot better now than they had in the past. So that's pretty exciting as well as just the, the agencies that now see that we're doing things a little bit differently and then want to partner with us even more. You know, this time of year, so many things are happening, so many stories, carols, movies, and people are so excited to get into the festive, mm -hmm. uh, you know, time of year. And Gary Robinson out in California used to be around here and did work for the Muscogee Creek Nation submitted this to actually to the Muskogee Film Festival last year and now we want to show it to you the Indian night before Christmas and I hope uh, everybody out there watching this sort of gets you a fun way to get you into the spirit so mm -hmm. without further ado Mr. Gary Robinson and the Indian night before Christmas. Was the night before Christmas when all through the teepee not a creature was stirring, nothing crawly, nothing creepy. The moccasins were hung from the lodge poles with care in hopes that old red shirt soon would be there. The kids were nestled all snug in their beds while visions of choke cherries danced in their heads. And I in my Pendleton and Ma in her skins had just cuddled up cozy against cold winter winds. When out in the camp rose a noise so humongous, I thought a wildcat had sneaked in among us. Up I jumped and ran through the clutter, threw back the flap and made the lodge shudder. The moon and the stars in the night sky were blinking, like the headlight that shines on my 69 Lincoln. When what to my wondering eyes did show but an old wooden sleigh and eight buffalo with a plump little driver who was so well fed I thought for a minute it was flying fry bread. Like thundering clouds these mammoths they came and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now Harjo, now Redbo, now Chino and Sudo on Tall Chief, on Jim Boy, on White Cloud and Serpuhoodle. 
to the top of the trees, to the top of the bushes. He yelled, haul your fur and move your tushes. Like pine cones caught and tossed by a whirlwind and suspended in air by the magic of medicine, up to the lodge top, the bison they flew with a sleigh full of commodities and the old Indian too. Then in a moment they froze there in space and I felt all the color drain from my face. I turned back inside just as quick as a wink as down the smoke hole old red shirt did sink. He was dressed in red buckskins from his head to his foot. With beadwork and fringe, he really looked good. A medicine bundle he had by his side. On his back, a large bag made of buffalo hide. A headdress he wore as tall as a crown, made of white turkey feathers, all tipped in brown. His skin was as wrinkled as sun-baked earth, but none of these things told of his worth. He spoke not a word, but used sign language instead and filled all the moccasin with toys and fry bread. And then, like smoke rising into the night, he gave me a wink and took to his flight. Up through the smoke hole, into the sleigh, awaken his team with a hearty hoka hey. And I heard him exclaim as they thundered out of sight, Merry Christmas to all my relations and to all a good night. Okay, and that'll wrap up another great episode of Native News today. Folks, we thank you for being with us as we've had a great time. We hope that you've had a wonderful time watching, mm -hmm. looking back on some wonderful things, especially Indian Night Before Christmas. If you're not ready for Christmas now, it's not our fault. So <laughs> we're so excited about that. One thing we're not too excited about is kind of the wintry weather that we're dealing with right now mm -hmm. this week. But you guys actually um, know some things about what's going on with emergency management, and they're really going to be kind of on call. Definitely. They, as well as uh, with Light Horse, kind of make mm -hmm. the decisions right. as far as the weather conditions for working here. But uh, aside from that, they have trucks that have mm -hmm. the chains and everything. They will go get you if they need. They can. They have generators to open up the community centers mm -hmm. if they need to. Great. Um, they do tree clearing. Yeah. Fully equipped. Everything. Everything you need. Everything so for winter. <laughs> everybody out there, elders, you know, um, if it's cold or if you're in an area where you have no electricity, Muskogee Creation Emergency Management will be out in the respective communities. Mm -hmm. And there's a great chance, probably 100% chance, that they will be somewhere close to you if you need them. Um, and that's a great thing. It's a wonderful thing that that department provides. Um, and at this time of year, we just never know. You know, Oklahoma, we're going to mm -hmm. have ice storms, things like that. It's a great thing that the Muskogee Creek Nation is well prepared. So uh, with that uh, being said, we hope you have a great weekend. Stay warm and uh, everybody out there, if you can't catch us on CW1219, we love it when you do, but if you can't catch us here, catch us online on the Creek Nation homepage, Facebook, Twitter, follow what we're doing throughout mm -hmm. the week. Kyla here, she's on the highways and byways, <laughs> writing for the papers. So everybody out there have a great seven days and we'll see you next week, same time, same place. <laughs>